tutorial starts with a song, but it's only a few seconds long. Computer animation. Computer Started with animation. Hello folks, today we talk about two kinds of constraints in Maya. And what is a constraint? A constraint constrains one object to another. For example, a hand holding a hand. The stronger hand more or less constrains the weaker hand to itself. So when the stronger hand moves, the weaker hand will move with the stronger hand. For example, here you have a, a nice touch uh, I don't know which one is constrained to the other, but if the ad adult's hand will move upwards, the baby's hand will also move upwards, so it's constrained to that larger hand. In Maya you have two kinds of constraints, and I'll show you where you find them. In the animation menu here, animation, you find the constraints, lots of constraints really, and we're only going to use one constraint today, that's the point constraint, but they all more or less work in the same way, they constrain one object to a, another object. For example, when I right mouse click and uh, uh, look at the control vertices, these two dots here uh, are not objects, they are components, that's why we cannot constrain them using this constraint menu here in the animation uh, setting. When we go to effects, special effects, we find the N world, N particles, fluids, N cloth, and hair and constraint and the end constraint deals with cloth basically but not only and but we're uh, gonna have a cloth example here and we will use only one constraint here the end constraint called transform constraint so these two are being used by us in this tutorial so when you look at this animation here it's a character running starting to run she holds cloth in her hand it is constrained to the hand and it behaves like cloth, more or less. In this animation we have oh, faulty parts. For example, the hand is not really grabbing the cloth, but it doesn't matter to me. Uh, another problem here is that uh, there's a different lighting setting here and a different cloth, kind of cloth, uh, that she does not touch the ground properly. I should have lifted the ground like a millimeter or so, so it would have worked fine, but I didn't want to get into that. Also you see that the cloth penetrates her arm, which is an unwanted effect, but if you don't really get that close, you probably won't notice it. And in the last rendering here, with a different light again, we have this really lovely long stretching cloth it's the same animation with the same constraints to just different cloths and you see it sinks down into the floor because it does not, here's the reflection, very nice, because it does not respect the floor as a collision object and this is one of my favorite parts, I never expected that to happen. It uh, walks back and now you can see that there's a penetration of the floor right here. I could have changed this, but uh, for my purpose this is just fine. I always recommend my students to not start with a complex thing like uh, character animation in this case. When you deal with constraints, start with simple objects and then you get into it. And that's what I'm going to show you today in this tutorial. For example, if we choose just a cone, which is cloth in this case, and a sphere, which is the blue one up there, and the blue one makes strange motions like this jiggling around and uh, the cloth follows. At least the top of the cloth object follows. Uh, I used a tune rendering here, Arnold tune rendering, in order to see the outline of the cone better. So this is how you would typically start and then go into a character animation is much easier uh, and less frustrating because you know how to do it and I'll show you how to do it now. So I have two objects in the scene. One is the sphere and one is the cone. The sphere is going to be my leading object which constrains that cloth object here. I could constrain 
the cloth object to the sphere as a whole object. But uh, I don't want to do this. I just want to constrain certain parts of it to the sphere. Now, the sphere has animation uh, coming with it because I did this jiggling up and down animation. And I'll briefly show you how I did this. Uh, you need to go to the NURBS sphere in my case. It's the same with the polygon sphere. And here you see that pink underlined, underlaid, under, under whatever, uh, translate X, Y, and Z. And uh, for example, if I type in here equals sign of frame, I get this motion in the X axis. And when I do the same uh, in, in this axis, uh, in the Z axis, I get a rotation or a sine curve or whatever. So this is what I have now. This up here is a random function. When you right -click, mouse click, you can edit that called expression. It's basically the translate Y of that NURBS sphere is random number between 2 and 2.3. When, uh, if I find it too harsh, too much, I can reduce it easily and edit so the uh, up and down jiggling is not that drastic anymore. And um, when I go to the Z axis and I change this to cosine frame, this is the animation I get. It's uh, like a rotation around that cone top. So this is a leading object. You could also, of course, keyframe it. So it goes from here to there or up and down. But I find the expressions in this case very simple and uh, very effective. Quite nice, actually. Now, um, I want to have a look at the cloth object. And the cloth object is not the standard cone because the standard cone looks like this. It has less subdivisions here than this one. And how did I do this? No fancy polygon modeling. I just used this um, attribute editor tab here, the poly uh, cone, and I set the radius. I left the radius where it was, but I uh, changed the subdivision axis to quite a high value. And uh, the same to the subdivisions in height and the bottom as well, the cap as well. So uh, I need so much geometry here as opposed to here because this is my gonna be my cloth object now I go to FX and I create cloth from it a very fast process really I select the object and I go to cloth and end cloth and create and cloth from it now it's end cloth I can see it here and here I see the nucleus the nucleus is the gravitation of our object it basically falls down and it doesn't care about that sphere at all. While it falls down and we have to wait until the red line moves on a little bit further because now we can scrub here. And here you see already how fast it falls and that it changes its geometry due to gravity. But now we'll start constraining it. And uh, this is how we go about it. We're in the FX menu anyway, so we have the end constraints here and we'll use the transform constraint. The transform constraint loves components, for example, vertices. And I create without selecting anything else, a constraint which is called a transform constraint. It doesn't need anything. It just uses these little dots here. Now the animation is quite different and I again wait until that red line moves ahead and forward a little bit. And now I have this interesting effect that is by itself very nice. And it basically tells us that the top stays as it is. It's still that coney part here, but the rest can move down. This is our end constraint. The end constraint sits here and it's important to notice that it's sitting here. Now we want to constrain this object here to our sphere. So with it selected, we uh, control select the NURBS sphere in our case, or whatever kind of object you have here. And then we need to go back to animation to the other constraint menu and we make a point constraint. And as you can see, the sphere moved to the cloth and that's exactly what we did not want to happen. 
Why is that? Well, let's undo this. It has to do with the selection order. I selected the dynamic constraint first, that one, and then the NURB sphere. Let's change the selection order, the sphere first, and then the constraint with the control key. And now we constrain it again, point constraint. And then you see this kind of object, strange object here, and the red line moves again. And now we have the animation we want. So the end constraint tells me which part of the cloth should stay sort of fixed, conserve the state of the object. That's the, in my case, the tip of the cone. And now we tell the whole cloth to follow the very nervous sphere. Which is quite an amazing animation. And here again you can scrub through the animation. And all the black things here, you see I did a tutorial about this, it's called self-penetration. The cloth object is so thin-walled that it does not feel the other side properly. Uh, the, it just penetrates the other side. If you want to get rid of this, just briefly, you need to go to end, the end cloth. And here in the dynamics, pro, uh, actually in the collisions property, you find collision flag is set to face. And the self-collision flag is set to vertex. If you set this to full surface, it takes much longer to evaluate. As you can see, it moves very, very slowly uh, because it takes much more time to simulate. So uh, the easiest way to simulate such a thing is with a vertex. But later on, before rendering, you might go to the full surface. So there's no self-penetration here because the... Well, actually there is some because the motion is so drastic, but basically the cloth respects the opposite surface. When you change parameters of the cloth itself right here and not go to the collisions and I will go back to vertices so it calculates a little bit faster, but uh, the dynamic properties you find things like the stretch resistance. If you reduce this from 20 to say just 1, simulates very fast and then you get this extreme stretch here. One nice thing here is the is using the presets. The presets for example airbag and this is not representative at all it um, will update in just a second. Right now this is what it looks like at frame 47 in our case and this is the animation we have. So that's the air, how the airbag behaves in a self-penetration um, environment. And with this I leave you for now. Just let's recap. Under animation you find the constraint, which is the constraint which constrains this object here with the end constraint, which works only right here, which is a strange representation of uh, this um, constraint, but uh, it sits right here where we put it at the very beginning on the component level. And uh, with this, I leave you for now. Bye bye. Thank you.